The future will not be about waste, it will be about resources. And if we don't change how we work, we might not even exist in the future. So going into circular economy means that we need to embrace it fully and develop solutions for it. And that's why we're here today. We talk with politicians, decision makers, business leaders, NGOs and everybody else that wants to listen and, and can make a change to move forward much more faster than is happening today. Young people are, are really, really becoming fully aware of the, of the seriousness of, uh, of, of climate change. And they really require the older generation to, to do something about it. Uh, Rang is a company we have together with the Embassy of the Netherlands here in, in Stockholm and together with ICC Sweden invited more than 90 people to, to talk about how can we transform the society from a liner to a circular economy. We have heard business cases, six of them, to present what they are doing, the challenges that they are facing. And uh, I hear the same story. We need to have the politicians to understand the possibility that lays ahead of them. So inform, discuss, educate and bring them in as partners. That, I believe, is the way forward. You cannot solve the climate issue if you not solve uh, the whole transformation of circular economy. So politicians today need to see it as a paradigm shift that actually should shape regulation and policies in all areas, from the very local waste management into production, into the core standards of how uh, Sweden and how Sweden interacts with other countries and European level. Um, that the whole regulation needs to make a shift. Why the Netherlands is so successful in circular economy? Um, various reasons, uh, I would say. Uh, we are a business country, so there's a lot of uh, uh, private sector with an innovative and entrepreneurial mind. As a government, we have set a, a very uh, high ambition. Uh, we have set in 2050, uh, the Dutch economy will be fully circular. So in a nutshell, I think we had a, a very good discussion and several good discussions where we looked at uh, the details of the agenda and the 169 target behind the 17 goals and how we actually find support in many parts of the SDG or the circular economy through the SDG agenda, which I think is great because it's signed by 193 nations globally. It's there as a framework to build momentum from. When it comes to policy making, we find wide support, but we need to bring it down to details to get the action going locally, regionally, globally. A lot of it is actually political because you have to remove a few of the obstacles, but you have to have people who understand the issue and who are sort of, uh, who understand and, and actually believes that this, that this is right and add some energy into the political process. If no one does anything, nothing will happen. I'm the originator of uh, the waste hierarchy. It's called the ladder van Lansing in Dutch. Um, I, I made that proposal in 1979. My main issue now is uh, that we, we need a, um, a system, another, not another system, but a way of uh, system thinking. Inclusive thinking is a long, uh, with a long-term vision, but also uh, measures, activities, and so on that that work now at, at this this moment. Yeah, I mean, if you if you look at the waste hierarchy, it was developed in a in a certain time according to certain needs um, that we had in the 70s, starting in the 60s, we had a sanitation need and we had a problem with, with our waste. So it was focused on that. And it was, it's been very useful, uh, launched in 79 until now. Um, but now when we're looking at how do we achieve our goals with limited resources for the long term, we need to take that and apply it to a larger resource capital. Um, so that's, it's really interesting that we've been able to have these discussions with the founder, Dr. Lansink, um, myself and others, to figure out how can we think about principles for resources in general. Um, some issues start popping up when you think about, okay, if you have a virgin resource, say you have a forest, how do we think about 
reduce, reuse, recycle, um, oh, prevention, and then incineration and landfilling. It's, it, it doesn't fit perfectly. So we're working on how can we make that for resources in general. And it's still a work in progress. I must say that I'm really happy that we could invite both Dr. Lansing and Dr. Aid to present at this seminary. It's like the final of a one-year discussion where we have talked about is the waste hierarchy the future or not? And evidently we see that Dr. Lansing says very clear that we need new ideas and that Dr. Aid's idea of, of a time-place function principle need to be added. But I think we will see more from Dr. Aid going forward how we can transform the society from a linear perspective to a circular perspective. And we need new principles. That is really what I have learned today. So today's gathering was very important because in order to realize a future where um, businesses and actors in society are easily and naturally doing what's best for our long-term goals and next generations, we need collaboration from, from the government, from society, from research, and definitely from businesses. So we had all of that here today and we had some really inspiring stories from different parts of Sweden and Europe. So it's, um, I think it's a great step forward. Yeah. I have been here talking today about the REMAP project, which essentially is that we take the tailings from our iron ore production we process that into an appetite concentrate, and the appetite itself contains valuable critical raw materials, which we, through the new process we're developing together with Easy Mining and Rhine Cells, can extract both uh, mono ammonium phosphate, so into mineral fertilizers, REEs, so rare earth elements, and gypsum. We work with recovering of phosphorus. This is a really important global issue because there is a uh, lack of resources of phosphorus and the parts that's there is actually contaminated very often with cadmium and other ways. In the Netherlands they also incinerate their sludge so we can actually recover phosphorus in a very good way and we hope to collaborate much closer and more than we do today with the Dutch incinerators. The circular economy is something which uh, our company is doing for a long, long time. Uh, we actually are uh, circular at this moment, but we want to do more. And that's one of the things uh, we are looking for with Easy Mining, to get uh, a better phosphate recovery out of sewage sludge, but also to uh, get uh, um, many of the heavy metals out of the sludge such as iron and aluminium and maybe and also the sand which is in the sludge we, so that we can recover it and reuse it. We want to uh, connect uh, the people, planet and profit and it works. So circular society and circular economies is embedded in, in our strategy. The case that we discussed today in the, in the session was about the Torque Paper Circle, so that it's the world's first um, recycling service for paper towels, uh, is, is a service that we have developed precisely with our customers, with recycler experts uh, across the world who um, then have the expertise. And then in putting this into practice, we have to then work with different municipalities and, and, and other distribution companies and uh, facility service companies. And all together in this partnership, we've been able to, create, to close the loop here and make a real concrete example of a circular society. I think the most important thing to do in the short term when it comes to transition into circular economy uh, is to do as much as you can. It doesn't matter if you're a business leader or a politician or uh, you're pers a private person. Um, because we are in a rush. We only have 10 years now to, to change. In circular economy we have to collaborate. And that's why I think it's super important that we collaborate with the other Nordic, European, well, the other countries in the world basically, for the politicians is to set circular targets together with the other countries, align them and then build the roadmaps together with the other countries. In short terms, I think uh, maybe if, if I would uh, be in charge of this uh, politically, 
I think I would, uh, I would uh, in a very Swedish way, uh, make a report to see what are the main obstacles and then remove them one by one. I'm guessing there's a lot of taxation, standardization, uh, a few issues about legislation and definition of waste uh, that need to be taken care of politically. One of the remarks that, uh, that were made was the, the, the need for politicians to educate themselves. Uh, you know, there's many politicians that still think that circular economy is the same as recycling. No, it's not. I uh, see the Netherlands, their example. They create roundtable discussions where they, they gather all the people, all the stakeholders. And when they come up, up from those roundtables, they have an agreement. So why don't we do that in Sweden also? I think it's extremely valuable that uh, what uh, Rangsells together with ICC and, and the Dutch Embassy today have done. They brought together a lot of different actors. Uh, again, coming through the full value chain and, and then bringing up some examples from, from science, from research, um, academia, or also bringing in some clear examples from, from business. Um, and now also in the afternoon there will be more discussions around uh, the policy aspects of this. Um, and I think that's extremely valuable because, it's, as I said in the beginning, it's the partnerships and it's the dialogues that will make us move forward and that's super important, I think.